Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to our video on section 14.3, concentration and reaction rate laws. Now, reaction rate laws are new for us. Keyword law. That's a new thing. We talked about reaction rates, what that means. But now we're going to talk about the law of reaction rates and how to write a law. So reaction rate laws express the mathematical relationship between the rate of a reaction and the concentration of reactants. So if I take a generic example, like reactant A reacts with reactant B to form my products, let's analyze how we can create a, re a rate law out of this generic reaction. The products in this case don't matter because the rate of my reaction only depends on my reactants colliding. It does not depend on what's going to be formed after the fact. So in a rate law, the products do not matter because they do not affect the rate of the reaction. Now, the format of a rate law is pretty simple. It's the same every single time. It's that the rate equals some constant K times the concentration of your one of your reactants raised to a power of M, we'll talk about what M is, times the concentration of your other reactant, B, raised to a power of N. Now let's break down what these things mean. Rate, <clears throat> we know what that is already. It's a measure of your concentration over time, how your concentration changes over time. K, this is your rate constant. It's a constant that's dependent on temperature and your units will vary. It's not a set number that's always given. Your rate constant will change and it depends on the other things in the problem. And A and B, these are the concentrations of your reactants. Now what's new here, besides just the uh, rate constant, is M and N. Let's talk about what those are. M and N are called your reaction orders. So M is a reaction order, N is a reaction order. These are just arbitrary letters assigned to some integers you're going to be putting in these spots later on. Uh, you could have called it, you know, P and Z. It doesn't really matter. The variables chosen were M and N. Reaction orders tell us how important changes in the concentration are in affecting the rate of the reaction. So if I change the concentration by this much, how will that affect my rate? Versus if I change it by that much, how will it affect my rate? So <clears throat> we'll look at this more closely in a moment. We determine our orders of reaction or reaction orders experimentally through data. So you have to have data in order to figure out what your reaction orders are. Now let's look back at our example reaction again. So react, reactant A plus reactant B goes to the products. One key thing to know is in your rate law, which is the example here again, M and N are not A and B. So I have here, M is not A, N is not B. You do not take your coefficients in the balanced chemical equation, you do not take those and raise them to the power of A and B. That's not what those are. We'll use those coefficients in a different way, different time. For the rate law, they do not go as superscripts to your concentrations. Now, let's talk about how we do determine the orders of reaction. Before we get there, actually, to determine the rate law of a reaction, this thing here, you have to first determine the orders of your reaction. Reaction orders are generally, usually going to be 0, 1, or 2, meaning Above this, as a superscript, are going to be numbers. The numbers are either going to be 0, 1, or 2. And they can change between these two. They don't both have to be 0 or both have to be 1. This can be 0 at one point. That could be 1. This could be 2. That could be 0. It doesn't matter. Um, you're going to look at your data and determine that. So if your reaction order is 0, the 0 is up here. What that means is an increase or decrease in your concentration has no effect on the rate. And mathematically, that should make sense if you have something raised to a power of zero. If your reaction order is one, an increase or decrease in the concentration is proportional to the rate. So if I increase my concentration, so if I have a one here next to the A, if I increase A's concentration, if I double it, 
the rate will also double. It's proportional in that way. If my reaction order is 2, if I have a 2 here, so a to the second power, mathematically you can probably figure it out already. That means that an increase or decrease in the concentration of a has an exponential effect on the rate. If I double a, the rate will be quadrupled. It's an exponential effect. So that's what reaction orders are, and here's, here are the reaction orders you're going to come into contact with. We figure these out by looking at data. Very, the data that's very similar to the data table I showed you guys today in class. Now, to actually go through a problem with this, look at our next video on determining rate laws or determining uh, reaction orders using experimental data. Take notes, gentlemen. Adios.